Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Welcome to... Tuesday! Yes, welcome to I had to, to think Tuesday. about what day it was for a minute. Oopsies. And welcome to a thrifting video. So today we're going to go sourcing, but this time instead of turnstile or consignment stores or the bins, we're actually going to regular thrift stores, which is something <sighs> that we don't really do that often. Not only on camera, but also in person. I mm -hmm. feel like we just don't really no. hit up regular thrift stores we super don't. often. We don't really that much. So today we're going to be going to at least one Goodwill, and then of course we're going to be going to Unique. Last oh, yeah. time that we did a thrifting video, video with us. I feel like Unique was pretty shy. And Unique was really shy. She has not been shy since then. Off camera. But the times on camera she's very to herself. So, so let's see if we can crack her out of her shell for a little bit. We're really hoping that people are like busy or out of town mm -hmm. or if they're out shopping it's not like thrifting. No. So we're hoping that it's like not that busy places. Right now we're at the first Goodwill parking lot and it doesn't seem too bad. Everybody's donating. There's yes. a lot of people donating. Yeah they're probably going through their old dishes and stuff. Speaking <laughs> of which, what are you looking for? So today, I guess I'm looking for kind of my usual stuff that I look for in fall and winter, which is of course like coats, blazers, mm -hmm. sweaters and stuff, but also some like vintage Christmas decor wouldn't be that bad for mm -hmm. personal usage. We also, yeah. as you guys know, are hosting Thanksgiving. So if we found, you know, some nice fun little additions to the Thanksgiving table, that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. What are you looking tour. for? Uh, the exact same thing, except we don't have any plates. We don't have a matching set of six plates. Yes. So if I find six white plates that aren't nasty, we'll consider yeah. that one a win. Yeah, and then we can just re-donate them after. Yeah, we'll just put them in a box and take them back or throw them in the basement. Luckily, with the Goodwill that we're going to right now and with Unique, they have quite a lot of, like, yeah. dishes and stuff. So those sections are quite huge. So if we are looking for that, I think we could possibly find them. Yeah. I'd love to find, like, a vintage Christmas blow mold. That'd oh, be that would be wonderful. Yeah, I do don't... think the one other thing that I know that I need is a little crisp dish for the cranberries in the can. Mm. That was one of my the, family's tradition. You uh, use the nice, the good china for the canned cranberries. <laughs> yeah. You just kind of mash them in there. Ooh. Yeah, so coming up on Thursday, we'll just remind you guys, we do have a bins haul, and I think it's actually going to be both of us in it. As we said, mm -hmm. we have a friend coming from out of town who is oh. going to thrift with me at the bins, and she's going to do some shopping for Ryan, so it might be like a Ryan reacts to his own stuff that oh, he's going to sell. Oh, it's going to be so good. And then Valentine's, tomorrow on Wednesday, you guys get the E toolbox of, I think we might have at least around 10 online or app or website like Digital tools, tools that are extremely helpful. Yes. But otherwise, we're going to go shopping. Let's go shopping. Come on with us. I passed by all the coats to get to the section that I really wanted to go to first, which of course was the blazers, though coats, don't worry, I will see you soon. So I started to look through the blazers to see what I could find. The first in the section to catch my attention was this really cool vintage jacket. It had like Native American moccasins printed throughout. It was by a brand called Longhorn. It was very, very cool. There was also this cabbie, but it was 11. Sometimes I do pay 10 for cabbie, but I didn't think this piece was that cute. Here is a perfect example of a vintage blazer I absolutely would get at the bins. I do still sometimes pick up vintage blazers at thrift stores, but they have to be about $9 or less, so I unfortunately had to skip that. Oh, what do you know? We found a Draper James in the jackets. It's $15, but do you notice that little RSVP under the logo? That is because this is the Coles line. Do not pick up the Draper James Coles line. Draper James itself is already not that good of a bolo anymore, but the Coles line is an absolute pass. Why must they keep doing this to me? Another super cute vintage wool blazer by a brand called Gordon. This is $13, so I can't get it here, but I totally would get it at the bins. Here's to hoping that I somehow catch it at the bins when it gets there. The price on this Levi's jacket was actually really good. It was only $9, and it was a 2X, which is a great size as well. But Levi's jackets like this that aren't as high quality cotton have never really done that well for me. 
Next up, I decided that I would make my way to the men's jackets and men's blazers. There's usually a handful of vintage blazers over here as well, though once again the pricing is hit or miss. Sometimes it's $9, sometimes it's more. This one was only $9, so I did kind of contemplate it. The wool was super nice, but the colors and the pattern wasn't as fun as the other ones I had seen, so I passed on it. This one also had really nice wool, but again was a bit drab. This one I did like the pattern and colors, more too. I don't know, it was a little bit larger than I would have liked, so I skipped that one, and this one, once again, just didn't have as fun of colors or patterns as the ones in the women's section. This was a really cute bonobo shirt that was in the men's section. It's like a Hawaiian pink floral shirt. I don't have luck with bonobos, really, especially marked at $15, so that was gonna be a pass for me. And shockingly, the first thing that I ended up finding was a really wonderful pair of BDG Urban Outfitters pants. I feel like I find these a lot when I go to Goodwills recently, or I have been finding them a lot. These were nine bucks, and I really liked these because they are the High Rise Mom and a 31. I may just, in fact, try these on, but we will see if they fit. If not, they will be up on Poshmark. This was kind of a sad scene for many reasons. So it was a pair of Patagonia baggies. These were large. Again, I probably would have kept these. Even at $15, I don't think that's that much. The baggies are kind of hard to find and they're kind of expensive, pre-loved, but they had this little like burn hole. I think it's like from a bonfire, probably, in the back. So I did end up leaving these behind. These I just got because I really liked them for the holiday season. They are Hannah Anderson. I think these are probably a men's or women's large pair of pajamas. They were five bucks. I liked that they were $5 for the set instead of $5 a piece. They were just a little linty. They just need to go through the washing machine once or twice, maybe get a good lint roll, and they are gonna be good. I think they're really cute, and I think these will do good for this Christmas season. This kinda gooped me for a little bit, so I picked it up to look at it later. And when I got to look at it later, I was kind of disappointed. I thought this was going to be a Dale of Norway sweater because it has these buttons and Dale of Norway always has these kind of like Viking ship looking little buttons and they obviously are very well known for this Nordic style. This was $15 and upon further research, it is a very good Dale of Norway lookalike. So it's like a similar Nordic sweater company, but it was still just as adorable. This I thought was really cute. It was called Imperfects. It was a size extra large. I really enjoyed this like quilted patchwork kind of a thing. They had it in the bathrobes, so I didn't really know if it was supposed to be a bathrobe or if it was supposed to be like, you know, a cute little kimono. Moving right into the shoes, I first spotted these really adorable pair of little glittery tree torn sneakers. They unfortunately were $12. If they were like eight to maybe 10, I probably would have got them for like New Year's and like glitter and thinking all that kind of stuff. But 13, I thought was just a little high. They were really cute though. This next pair of shoes is typically a pretty good deal. It's Yossi Samura. They have these like really fancy kind of foldable put in your purse flats. They sell them at Anthropology all the time. They've done really well for me historically. And at $2, I would have gotten these if they weren't missing so much of the glitter in the front of the toe. Other than that, these are a really good pickup. If you see them at Goodwill for like four or five bucks, I would get them. These little Anne Klein shoes would have been really good to put on Depop with this like chunky kind of Mary Jane style, but for $11, that's a little bit much. I would much rather grab these in the bins. I was so certain that I was about to find a Harley clutch, and then when I absolutely didn't, I was devastated. But either way, I like to pick up these little seatbelt bags in the bins because they're much, much cheaper than $3, and they do pretty good for me on Depop. And here we have another men's piece of Patagonia that I would have gotten if it wasn't so expensive. These was $24. I just really wasn't feeling it, especially with all the wear. It is that really nice kind of like thicker fleece material, but the neck really wasn't in the best of shape. And then I did notice a hole on the sleeve after I was done filming this. I know that Jack would never let me buy this, but look at how adorable this little green trunk is. This would have been such a cute little like Christmas display. Oh, if you put like a little fern detailing thing on the top and then like a little candle. Oh, I should go back and buy this, but I think you would kill me. It was only $15. It really wasn't that bad. 
This I thought was adorable. Debbie, Jack's mom, my wonderful mother-in-law, has a smaller version of this sign. She has been and will be a Boston Terrier lover. But I unfortunately don't think they have anywhere in the house to display something this big. But for seven bucks, it wasn't that bad. No joke, this is one of my favorite, favorite things to do during the holidays is to sift through these like vintagey looking ornament bags. You truly do find some wonderful gems like these wonderful stars that I'm going to use on some green that I'm going to put on our curtain rod, which is going to look adorable. It goes with our kind of like 70s eclectic theme Christmas, which makes me super happy. I also love to look for these things because these are expensive. If you haven't, <laughs> if you haven't looked recently, ornament boxes, especially these like nice plasticky ones are stupid expensive so i don't want any of the ornaments in them though and i really <laughs> didn't think that i needed the flat ones because i think these are for like fancy ornaments this is a fancy ornament i really didn't know anything about it google told me nothing so unfortunately i did just give her back it didn't really feel that heavy though it felt like it was maybe like a styrofoam on the inside after looking at the home goods, I meandered over into the clothing section and I found this We Wore What kind of cute, like, I didn't know if this was supposed to be a dress, like a little pinstripe shirt moment situation. I'm starting to see this brand a lot more at TJ Maxx and I'm noticing that the resale just isn't that good anymore. So for seven bucks, I decided to leave it behind. And right down the way from that We Wore What was this really cute new Tag Talbots piece. I definitely would have picked this up in the bins or if it wasn't $13, but I loved this like contrasting, like really bright blue embroidery. Absolutely beautiful. And then down from that, this was a good row. I found this $15. The brand is Daily Practice. The tag is going to give me a hard time. I'm very sorry. This is Anthropology's kind of like lounge wear, athleisure wear situation they have going on. I thought this was a really cute little sweater dress, but unfortunately Goodwill beat me to it and priced it at $15. Then I ended up finding this $9 little Zaya top. I personally cannot sell Zara to save my life, but Jack actually has really good luck with it. I thought about showing this to him, but it was kind of a plain top for $9. My final thing at Goodwill was this beautiful vintage $13 cat sweater. I loved the ornaments on it. I loved how the sequins are starting to kind of like lose their sequin. This sweater is so old. This cat was really having a tough time in there, man. Like that sock must be kind of tight. This sweater was also adorable though, but I did unfortunately leave this behind. 13 bucks is just a little much. I decided to make my way to the pants, and at the end of the pants aisle was this that caught my attention, of course. It was a faux Louis Vuitton, little wristlets, definitely faux, felt like plastic, really bad. The first pair of pants that caught my attention was this pair of Spanx. They were like a faux leather, and I can't believe that nowadays I'd skip this. $9, faux leather Spanx. In the past, I would have been like, what are you thinking? But anything under a size large seems to not do well for me. Then I found these theory pants. They were kind of nice, but they were an older label, so I had to pass on them. Then I found these Zara faux leather pants. These were pretty good shape, to be honest, and they were $9. But then I looked at the back and it seemed like the back seam was kind of pulling apart. So I'm just not even gonna, I'm not even gonna go there. Fashion. Next up, I found these ribbed knit pants and these caught my attention right away just because they're ribbed and knit. They're very bouncy and springy with how ribbed they were. I always love when a pant is like that. And they were actually by Rebecca Taylor, which caught me totally off guard. I will pay $7 for these, especially with how unique they are. A couple down, I found this pair of trousers and these are by Babaton, which is an Aritzia brand. It's like the most expensive Aritzia brand. They're 11 bucks, which is kind of pricey, but I think these are quite cool once I steam them. So I am actually gonna pick these up even for 11. This just kind of caught my attention and was a little odd. So I found these Ann Taylor paper bag plaid pants. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, $13, okay. Then I found these 
cotton on plaid paper bag pants, much lower quality, and cheaper. Then I found these Target plaid paper bag pants, and I think these were all different sizes, so kind of strange. My last find at this Goodwill was this Anthropology pumpkin mug. I actually think that these are the ones from this year, so it's kind of odd that it's already here. It's in perfect shape, so yes, I will pay $4 for it. So we're now at Unique. I at, love Unique. At stop number one, all I got was the Babaton pants, mm -hmm. the Rebecca Taylor pants, that Anthro mug, and a little like uh, clip for Debbie, like a little like uh, car clip. Oh yeah, I got the Urban Outfitters pants, I got a couple bags of really cute Christmas ornaments, and then I got the Hannah Anderson pajamas. So not a ton yet, but we are now at Unique, which is usually more promising than oh, any of the Goodwills around here. I love Unique. We still have not decided yet if we're gonna go to a third Goodwill, we'll just have to see how Unique delivers, if it does or does not. I think I've decided I'm manifesting another black label, Betsy Johnson. I would love that. <laughs> That's, that's what I I'm on the go. That's what I'm on the love one. Yeah, so we're gonna pop in. Let's go. Right when I got into Unique, I checked the new rack of stuff coming out and I found an Allude cashmere sweater. This is my first time finding Allude. It's a very expensive, usually cashmere brand. This is so cute also. Totally getting this, really excited about it. Then I moved on to the cardigans. I thought I would change it up and not just start with the jackets again, especially because I already found that Allude sweater. I was kind of in the mood to look at more sweaters. So let's do this. Oh, we got a second case of the coals. It's like a bad flu going around that just makes everything worth nothing. So this Elizabeth and James, I can just tell, is a coals piece. Sure enough, Here's your way to check. You can check the small label, and if it says Kohl's, it's Kohl's. Okay, did not expect to find this, especially right now, but I found this amazing vintage Halloween graphic cardigan, and I pick these freaking things up all year round, even if they're not staying with me and I'm selling them, and I'm gonna sell this one, totally getting it, super pumped, and I also love, did you notice, that the buttons are little angry smiling faces. <laughs> Then I spotted this Lululemon cardigan. Back in the day, I probably would have paid the $20, especially because I have a 20% off coupon. But you know what? The Lulu sweaters don't really do that good for me anymore. So I'm not gonna get this, though I'm gonna take it to Ryan and see if he wants it. Next, I found this interesting cardigan by Rodier Paris or Rodier. 1029, it's like a sweater vest with a graphic of flowers on the back. I looked it up because it said Paris on it and they can have value, but usually don't. So I'm just not taking the risk, maybe in the bins. Next up, there was a Barefoot Dreams giving me flashbacks of the Spanx at the last stop. Back in the day, $12.79 for a good old soft Barefoot Dreams. I would have jumped on this, but nowadays that is a total skip from me. Up next, we have another one that back in the day I'd be kicking myself. This is a Kate Spade cardigan, but it is literally just a black peplum cotton cardigan. So I will not be paying $8.49 even with the discount. It's just so blah. And Kate Spade already doesn't do that great anymore. So that is, that's a no. Let's see what Ryan does with the Lulu. I have a feeling he's not gonna want it, but I just thought I would check. So I told him to let me know by head nod. So it's gonna be a no from Ryan too, I guess. <laughs> okay, next up, we found this cabbie cardigan, even though it's actually more of like a convertible scarf situation. It was a super good price at $4.79, so I did look up the style and it doesn't look like it does that well, so I'm gonna skip it. Next up, this little cute Zara sweater. I totally would have got it at the bins. It's really cute, but I'm not gonna pay over literally like a dollar for it. 
Same with this Garnet Hill. Definitely would have got it at the bins. It feels like it's at least a cashmere blend, but I'm not gonna pay this price for it. And same with this Tabitha sweater. I think that this is an Anthro brand from back in the day. And another one, this Kate Spade, a different Kate Spade, just a black cardigan, gotta pass. This one, of course, totally caught my attention. This is a Hot Topic Skull Graphic Cardigan. This is amazing, but it is in horrible shape. This is pilling that is to such an extent that I will not even pick it up. I know in the tools video we said like pilling is the easiest thing. This is a nightmare. Next up, we found a Reformation jeans cardigan, and I carried it around for a while. This was just some fuzz that could come off. It looks like discoloration, though. I carried it around for a while, and I actually decided to change my mind. The Reformation stuff, you, I feel like, have to be really picky with nowadays, so I decided that this wasn't worth it. Okay, I couldn't wait any longer. I had to go to the coats and jackets, so let's go see what they have. In the bins, I actually probably would have got this. It's an Express Sherpa bomber jacket. It's really nice, and I think it was from like 2021. Though here it's $16.99, and that's definitely not happening. Next up was this J. Crew. It's the black label, which it can be newer, can be older. I think this was actually from like 2017 or 16. It was priced super high, so I didn't even consider it, but it was a pretty nice jacket. Correction, 2013, so that's a no. This Topshop trench coat was so freaking cute. If it was like 10 to 12, I actually would have picked it up. Not for 25, so I unfortunately had to pass on it. And at Unique, the first thing I ended up finding was this blue, almost like a denim material, Dooney and Burke one strap little shoulder bag. Unfortunately though, she was a little bit worn. It looked good on the hanger, and then once I took it off, I noticed it had some stains on the front. We have a little bit of corner wear, the strap is a little dirty, and the interior did have a pretty nasty pen stain inside. So I did leave this one behind, especially because they wanted 30 bucks for it. And down the road from that was this really adorable little fossil bag. I remember there used to be a day in reselling world where I could pick these up for 10 to 15 dollars and flip them for 50 to 60 in like a week or two. This one was 13. I did end up passing on this one just because I didn't think the 13 was worth it. It was beautiful though. This would be perfect for somebody if you were buying it for yourself. Okay, and a few pairs of shoes that I would like to show the audience. This pair, I really hemmed and hawed over. They were really nice. They were really, really, really well made. Beautiful suede, beautiful like leather soles. They were $18, but I did have a 20%. They are just Joe's jeans, and so I looked them up, and they apparently aren't really worth a ton, unfortunately, but they were super nice. So this next pair is Dolce Vita, and I really hemmed and hawed about these too because I thought they were cute. Like an ankle-high, kind of like chunky square toed booty. I thought these were really nice and they wanted $26 for them, which I was not willing to pay even with the discount. Moving over into the sweaters, I ended up finding this really adorable little gem for Depop. The brand is Le Solier. Never heard of them, never seen them, but it's this really adorable kind of like cropped fitted black metallic -y sweater. I think this is going to do great for New Year's. And this was in the sweater section, but it definitely is not a sweater. It's a Michael Lauren, really adorable crochet sleeve, little black crew neck. Michael Lauren, if you don't know, is a very, very expensive like loungewear company. It's a sister company of Lauren Moshi. So their stuff is always kind of kitschy, kind of cute. Very excited to pick this one up. I ended up finding this gray free people kind of like sweatshirt long sleeve looking thing. It was $9.49. It was a medium. I really hemmed and hawed over this one as well. The arms were really pilly and I don't think they were like free people pilly. I think they were just actually pilly. And then I noticed some stains. I thought I could get them out, but I ended up just leaving this one behind. This sweater absolutely did 100% jump scare me. So it is really pilly. I will give you that. But 
when I first looked at this, I saw Pringle of Scotland. I did not see the Times H&M. Pringle of Scotland by itself is a very, very, very expensive sweater brand. I think it's Irish, if I'm not mistaken. This sweater did feel amazing, so it had some like really good Irish wool in it. The H&M stuff does not do as good. Moving over into the tops section, I ended up finding this Barbour, which normally is a really good brand, but they wanted $13.49 for it. I really did, though, like this kind of cool gradient effect they had going on with the ombre. I thought it was kind of cute. I knew what this top was before I even got to it on the rack. It is an Urban Outfitters JoJo Thermal. This is from Out From Under. These used to be the talk of the town. They used to be all over the place. I would find them all the time in the bins and then be able to sell them for $25 to $35 a piece. Unfortunately, you just can't do that anymore. They have been knocked off by everybody. This I ended up getting for myself. It was $8.99 minus my 20% discount. It's by the brand Super Massive, which I think is just like, here it's called Ragstock. It's like a funny little t-shirt shop kind of a thing. Um, I don't know where else they'd be. New tags though, I really enjoyed this color and the terry cloth, that's for me. This sweater, I really fell in love with, but unfortunately, it ended up being the price, $13.29, was just a little too much. That is Michael Simon, who makes these really fun, really eclectic kind of cardigans. This one had little chicks all over them, but I just thought that was going to be too much, so I ended up leaving this one behind. I really, really did want to get this dress. It was so cute. It was Zara. It was $19. It was this beautiful blue, like I can see somebody wearing this to like a holiday party or like a really fun, like, you know, formal kind of festive event. I loved it. But unfortunately, $19, even minus my 20%, was just a little bit too much, but it was so cute. I also did really fall in love with this vintage vest. It is Melrose or More Rose. I don't know. It was $13.49, but it was this beautiful floor length, like duster sweater vest. It buttoned at the chest. It was absolutely adorable. I just didn't think $13.49 was worth it. It was just a little pricey. This Sherpa green vest, it was $10.49. It was by Liz Claiborne. I was really thinking about this one. The one thing that I couldn't get over was this little stain right here. I know that I really am not able to wash it and I really didn't want to pay to get this thing dry cleaned. So I did end up leaving it behind for some other Depop girly, but oh my gosh, this was so cute. This dress, I was more than happy to pay the $13.49 minus the 20%. It is by the brand Sonnet James. She started out as a mommy blogger that really wanted to make her own clothing that fit her lifestyle. That clothing line has since become very popular, and her stuff is worth a little bit of money. And I was very pleased to see that this was a jumpsuit with pockets. I am 100% going to get this, and I'm very excited about it. I was oh so pleased to see a little bit of a goldie sticking out of the rack for me. These were $9.49 minus the discount. They are a size 28 and I love that they have this like frayed hem to them. This is a brand that is really expensive but unfortunately isn't really worth that much. It is Piazza Simone. She is like really, really high end but her stuff just doesn't really have that kind of retail so I'm not going to pay $13 for them. These theory pants, though, I was very excited to get. They were $9 minus the 20%. This is the newer label for theory, and I really like this, like, really delicate pinstripe style, and I think these are built really well, so I definitely am going to pick these up. And my theory pants have actually been doing pretty good for me the more that I've been finding them. This skirt falls under the category of Wood Done Perfect on Depop minus <laughs> price. This is a cabbie skirt, shockingly enough, with this adorable little, like, micro zipper. It's the most perfect brown velvet that is not showing up on camera, or brown corduroy that's not showing up on camera. This thing was beautiful. I loved it so much, but for $13.49, it was just too much. This, I always have to check if I ever see any painted bakeware that looks like this, if it's Le Creuset, because the more that I check one of these days, it's going to be, this was just a really cute little bunt pan. And then the last thing I ended up getting at Unique are these two really beautiful crystal bowls for our Thanksgiving table. It has been a tradition in my family to always serve the canned cranberries in fine crystal, so that's what we did. I found this Fabletics velvet jumpsuit, and Ryan actually wanted to try it on. So here's Ryan in his Fabletics velvet jumpsuit. He thought he was going to get it, but by the end he thought about it more and realized he wouldn't probably wear it as much as he'd like to, so he did pass on it. But it looks cool. Then I headed over to the Blazers. I usually have pretty good luck with the Blazers at Unique, so I'm pretty excited to take a peek. That rhymed. 
Alrighty, well I looked through them all, and let's take a peek at what I picked out. So there's this Soft Surroundings really cute cherry blossom printed jacket, and it was a pretty good price, but I'm actually going to pass on it. Soft Surroundings is not worth picking up at a regular thrift store at all, basically, nowadays, unless maybe it was a substantial coat. Then I found this customized vintage Liz Claiborne cotton blazer, beautiful purple tie-dye by some Etsy called Davidson Studio. They aren't that expensive on there, so I decided not to get it, but I really liked how this was tie-dyed. It's so pretty. I found this Barbie Pink J. Crew open blazer. This was $12.99, $12.29 actually, and it was really cute. I will be picking this up. It's a linen blend and it is very nice. I thought I would ask Ryan if he wanted this vintage Santa and Christmas vest. I know his vests have been selling well. He did pass on it though. This was another J. Crew. It was kind of a boucle type style. So I looked it up and unfortunately the comps aren't that great. So I'm going to pass on it. Then I found this Zara that was a 1429 Zara blazer. I really like the double breast to it and it's very oversized. So I actually am going to pick this up even though it's going to be over $10. I just think it's cute and it's very trendy. So hopefully it does well. Okay, and the big boy. This is pretty crazy. I found this stunning wool, double-breasted, purple label Ralph Lauren blazer. Guys, if you don't know the Ralph Lauren labels, this thing not only is a very current style with these beautiful stunning buttons, so it would still be in stores right now. This thing would cost $3,000 at least. Like, this is an insane 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 find i was like running around screaming and ryan didn't really get it he was like oh that's cool and i was like no 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 you don't understand this is amazing then i went to the pants hoping that she had some matching pants or something to go with it so i checked the 15 16 sizes and y'all come on now now these are not the matching pants but these are some 1150 cute bootcut trousers that are freaking Mason Margiela. Um, 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 uh. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on here? These are definitely not a size 15, 16. These are much smaller. I'd say maybe these are like an eight or something. They just are in the wrong size, but oh my gosh. Okay then. And then I found these Max Mara pants, which is not as exciting, but like, quiet luxury. That's what I've been vibing with lately. I'm still gonna be picking these up. They're really nice. They're wool, navy blue, classic trouser. So let's take them home, shall we? Lafayette 148 was here as well. All the quiet luxury girlies were like whispering around, I guess, and donating their stuff. So not gonna get these for the price, but it was cool to see. Another Lafayette. Another one that I am not going to be picking up, they were just like cotton and they were a little pricey, so I'm not going to be grabbing those, but again, nice. And I will leave you all with this one last message. Friends and family are like fudge, mostly sweet, with a few nuts. Have a happy Thanksgiving, everyone.